We're back. We're back. A wonderful day to talk about America's trillion dollar credit card debt. Oh my goodness. So how the Federal Reserve, um, the New York Federal Reserve quarter two report showed that the uh, United States consumers have $1.03 trillion now of credit card debt. Incredible. Um, over 60% of consumers live paycheck to paycheck. And so the talk is that the cost of goods has gone up, of essentials, gas, everything has gone up, and we keep putting more and more on our credit cards. Um, so the debts reach now over a trillion dollars. How has that happened? <laughs> You know, we're all in trouble. Okay? Oh, yeah. Now, we're very positive people. <laughs> so, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There always is, okay? Yeah. Especially if you're looking for solutions. If you're looking for solutions, you're always going to find them. Absolutely. Okay? There, uh, there's ways to get out of these debts. Yeah. But how did we get there in the first place? Well, I think what's happening is that... It just took us by storm, uh, totally unexpected. By the way, this it's the first time in the history of the United States of America that we have reached this kind of debt, okay? Correct, correct. Um, look, I think it's a mixture of everything and us not being able to adapt quickly enough. The interest rates have come up the fastest that they've ever been in history. That's also, uh, you know, we're close to 8%. You know, because a lot of people say, oh, you can still get a 6.75 or 7.21. But those are the people with the highest FICO scores. If you look at the average people in the nation, they're going to be in the 7.5, something of that sort. Because not everybody has a super high FICO score. Correct. And so, you know, most average working America is going to be, you know... If they want to buy a property today, they're going to be looking at 7.5 or more. So I think it's it's a matter that we were not expecting something like this. <clears throat> but how do we get it on our credit cards? Because you're talking about home loans. Right. You're talking about interest rates to buy a home. Credit card debt. Well, when you go out to a restaurant and you go out to eat a dinner, a dinner nowadays will easily cost you 200 bucks. you know, even for five people. You know, I mean, depending where you go, of course, but if you go five, six, seven people and God forbid you order a drink, okay? Or, you know, they also kill you on the desserts. You know, you get a piece of cheesecake and that cheesecake costs seven bucks, you know? Yeah. Um, so you put it on the credit card. You go and you fix something with your car. You had to get tires. You put it on the credit card. You have to go get an oil change. You put it on your credit card. You go to your uh, kid's doctor, you know, to be seen. You put it on your credit card. And you're not paying down that credit card. You're not because, paying it down. Um, another stat is that um, most credit, I think it's over 50% of the balances at the end of the month don't get fully paid off of credit card balances. So... Let's say you've accumulated in that month now $2,000 on that statement balance. If you pay it off fully, and this is something that isn't really talked about. Right. If you pay that statement balance off fully, then you don't owe any interest to the credit card company. Right. But if you keep, you only pay 1000 and you leave $1,000 on the statement balance, now you're going to pay the high interest rate that a credit card has of 20 something percent correct on the thousand dollars that you left on there and that's what's happening it's accumulating and, and the bigger the compounding. debt can you imagine it's it's compounding in the opposite direction right because it, it's compounding your debt correct it's compounding your debt so and i was reading an article that most credit cards have 20 percent or higher yeah yeah. So 22, 24, 25. We yeah. put everything on the credit card. We don't pay the balances down. It's a 
recipe for this, I mean. You know, I would say uh, another reason I think that it's gotten to this point is a lack of control. But part of it is e-wallets, these digital wallets. Okay. So I put, when, when I, you get a new phone, it says, like an iPhone, it says put your credit card in there. So now it creates a digital credit card. So you can go Apple Pay. You can go to any store almost and just show your phone and that's your that's your payment. It's very um, convenient because I've had ish times where I forgot my wallet, but I literally had my, credit my card. wallet on my phone. The problem is, I don't do that anymore, but the problem is that it's so easy. And I remember one time... Um, I don't know where I heard this, but the the idea was, hey, if you're going to make a huge purchase, let's say you go to Best Buy and you're about to buy a big screen TV, you get to the register and instead of paying with a credit card, you pull out a wad of cash. And he says, let's say that big screen t TV costs you 1200 bucks. One by one, one, two. Oof. Three, four. By the time you get to five, six hundred dollars. It's painful. Seven. It's painful because you're physically seen. You know you're gonna have to put twelve hundred dollar bills to pay for this, and the psychology of swiping and how easy it is, and you don't feel the pain because it doesn't leave your account. It doesn't leave your bank account. You're. It's on credit, and that I think is part of. You know, I know credit cards have been around for a long time, but uh, it's more recent. And then you ha add to that, it's so easy to integrate it. I mean, YouTube has your credit card and all these different things. So you could just add a video. Uh, you can rent a movie and boom, it's from your credit. Yeah, before you know it, it can balloon <laughs> up, right? I agree with you. I don't use the digital credit card that much. Yeah. Uh, I'm more old school. I think it's smart. So, well, you know, I've had a few people tell me, hey, you got to get with the times, you know. But the problem that I would have for myself is that I felt that it was getting out of hand, you know. Because like you say, it's so convenient. It's so easy. Yeah. You swipe it. That's it. In fact, I remember many years ago, every time I went to the supermarket, I would pay cash many years ago, okay? There's been a tremendous number of years. I haven't paid cash at a supermarket probably in 15 years. It's all credit card. You know, Everything is credit card. And with inflation, you know, it creeps up and your balances increase where you go, oh, my God. Like, I've got stuff, you know... The payments on my cars, they automatically come out. Right. You know, and they are on the credit card. Well, car payments, like if a lease has to come from um, a bank account, I believe. Okay. I think, I think, at least with me, I remember it had to come from a bank account. It's cash. But there's a resistance to cash also, which makes you, it make, forces you to use credit. You're absolutely right. I've gone to some... I went to a small business recently, <laughs> and uh, we, we were buying a few different <laughs> games, uh, board games. And I said, can I pay with cash? Because I've had a few people say, oh, we don't accept cash. Some cafes, coffee shops, they don't accept cash. And then she says, oh, yeah, we love cash. <laughs> like, I prefer cash. And then she was saying, I don't know why places don't want cash. And I thought, you know... One of the reasons that I have heard from business owners is that some of that cash can get, there's theft. So oh. when you're dealing with <clears throat> cash, there's a lot more likelihood of theft. If you just say all credit, I'm saying within the organization. Sure, sure. All credit, you avoid that issue. You have to pay the percentages to the, to the companies because a lot of people don't know this, but when you pay with credit, the, the small business has to pay the credit uh, Visa, MasterCard, they have to pay them a percentage. Right. Um, so there's a lot of issues. Some people don't accept cash. Some people, it's just so easy with credit. And then the other issue of 
essentials are essentials now we're putting on credit and that's a big issue too because you know from gas which is now All Southern time. California it's over six dollars <throat> seven dollars a gallon you're putting it on your credit card most people oh yeah a gallon yep so you know to fill up a tank is costly now oh um, <laughs> I have a medium sized car and I went the gas was very low on the meter and I went to fill it up and it was a hundred and fifteen dollars I think a hundred and ten dollars something like that yeah. and I have a medium sized car uh, and you're right you know the only time I always pay with credit card when I get gas uh, the only time that I paid cash was the other day and that's because the uh, thing was down in, inoperable <laughs> And, you know, there was a sign on the gas thing that says, hey, you got to go pay inside. <laughs> and when I went in there, if I didn't have cash, I'd be out of luck. Because, you know, for that particular day until they, you know, service that, that gas station uh, pump, you know, uh, their older computers were down. No, no, you couldn't get gas in anywhere oh, in there. Only cash. Yeah, and so it was only cash. And... The lady told me, because I said, oh, you know, I haven't paid cash in a long time. I don't know if I have much cash. I wanted to put in quite a bit uh, or fill it up. And she says, well, most people, believe it or not, don't have any cash. Yeah. So they come in here and I said, you have to pay with cash. And they can't do it because they don't have any cash on them. They have to go to another gas station. So we are hurting today. So they have made the transfer of being let's say practically almost, I would say 90% of their business for gas stations is credit cards. Credit card. So <laughs> I've fallen into situations where I put on a lot of, I put on a lot of credit card debt and it was, it was challenging to, to pay down. Sure. Was, uh, and it wasn't a fun time. Mm -hmm. um, how do you suggest people reduce, uh, you know, minimize, I know like, the credit card debt. I mean, well, how, how do you think they can... Look, we're going to have to do it. And the one way is tightening your belt. Um, I was reading an article the other day where some guy was saying, look, what are you doing going to Starbucks or any one of these coffee places that charge you 6 $7 per coffee? Forget it. Make your coffee at home. You can probably do it for 25 cents or 35 cents. I'm guilty and, of that. And, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you're spent. So the only way is going to be tightening your belt. I think, I think that that's what we need to hear. Yeah. My, my generation, uh, you know. You don't want to hear it. No, but that's. But it's tightening your belt because all of these expenses can easily. And then, you know, I know we're talking about. The trillion dollar credit card debt. Right. But there are a lot of signs in the economy that people are hurting. What like are you I, seeing? What well, you I was seeing? reading another article where they're saying that um, withdrawals from uh, 401ks are also at an all time high. Okay. And any one of the, you know, you know, all of us out there know that when you withdraw from your 401k, you have, you know, tax consequences and penalties. Well, this article... right? Because there's some, sometimes exceptions. Right. And that's what this article was referring to. They're called hardship withdrawals. So you're going to avoid the penalties, okay? But you're not going to avoid the taxes on that money no you way withdrew. Around the taxes. No way around that. And yeah. so, but the article was explaining how... Uh, withdrawals from 401ks are, uh, are at an all-time high. Right. Another thing that's happened in the industry... Go ahead. Real quick on the 401ks. Yes. yes. Some people say, well, if it's a Roth 401k, majority of 401ks are traditional. So people pay taxes on the majority of them. Yeah, and that's your field. You know about that. Well, there's that's the only way that I know that you wouldn't pay taxes on the withdrawal. 
if it's like a Roth type of account. Got it. Because it's after to, after tax money. After tax money, but you have to meet special certifications. But go ahead. Right. Okay. Well, the other thing that um, this was an excellent article, and uh, I don't know if we can link it. I'll have to yeah. figure out. What, but the other thing they were saying is that um, the number of HELOCs that are out there right now. Okay. Explain a HELOC real quick. HELOC is uh, drawing money out of the equity of your house. So what they do is they appraise your house, and if you have equity, they give you like a checkbook, okay? And, uh, you know, you can have fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 depending on the value and the debt-to-income ratio on your property. They say, hey, you know what? You have this um, equity in your home. You don't have to refinance and spend all kinds of money and points and whatever, we can give you a HELOC. And the HELOC normally is uh, it's either very inexpensive or no cost at all, okay? The thing is that when you use it, okay, usually is interest only that gets paid. So the principal does not decrease. So, you know, in the past I've had a couple of HELOCs that I use for investment, and you have to have a tremendous amount of discipline not to use that money for something else, like vacationing. I had a buddy of mine that, you know, he loved to gamble, so he used it for gambling. <laughs> I had, you know, you take off on vacations or you buy a uh, Mercedes Benz, you buy an expensive vehicle, you, you know, spend that. So you have to be careful and have discipline with that. Because you're tapping into your home's equity. That's right. A home equity line of credit. It's That's a line of credit. On your house. On your house, which is similar to a credit card. Yes. Uh, but but it's cash. It's cash, and you have it in a little checkbook, and right. it's uh, it's uh, cash believe, available to you. Right. Right. And it's trust me, folks, be very careful with it. <laughs> Been there, done that, made those mistakes, and before you know it, you got twenty, thirty thousand dollars on your HELOC. And uh, you didn't use it for anything good or investment, which is what it should be for, to generate some income. But the problem is you're only paying interest. The principal is not going to decrease. Right. So be careful with that. It's a double-edged sword. But the article said uh, HELOCs are being used, again, excessively, Okay. And so the number of HELOCs that are out there, a lot of people are using them up and raising it to their limits. And now you have that like a, almost like a second loan on your property because usually they go in second position. So that's an interesting point. And I'd like to, on the description, we'll link, um, we'll link these uh, different articles. Uh, Michael Borda, Bordenado, which you... Turned me on to him. Yeah, he's good. He has a great video, a link, on talking about the debt consolidation. So he's saying... Michael's excellent. He's excellent. Yeah, you, you said... He's brutal. He, he's brutal. But he, he covers lives, a lot of that. He covers a lot of stuff. And um, he talked about that. He says that personal loans are going up. HELOCs. So what's happening is that, let's say that you have a ton of credit card debt. You pull, you pull from your line of credit on your home equity or a personal loan to pay off. You're doing debt consolidation. So you're getting a lower interest rate here. You're paying off the high 20-something percent on your credit card. But now you have more debt. Yeah. <laughs> and now you have free credit cards again that you can, because you were maxed out on those. Right. And that's what he's saying is happening. And uh, it's, it was very informative um, because people are taking personal loans and lines to pay off credit cards. Right. But, uh, you know, um, one of the things that there's this other guy that I follow, um, but Michael's excellent. Um, he was saying, look, you need to acquire additional skills. And if you have to get a second job, you know, everything that comes in from that second job, no matter what it may be, whether you're waiting on tables, you're you know, working in a restaurant, you're being a cook, whatever it is, you're an electrician, you're working more hours, or you're working overtime, spearhead that difference in money and use it to completely... Consolidate. Uh, 
consolidate your off. debts, pay off your debts. You know, yeah. not consolidate them, but pay them off. Pay them off. You know, and so that was an interesting thought because that means that you can earmark, you phys you you set it up in your mind, everything that's coming up because you have your base basic salary from the job you've been working at whenever 10 years 5 15 whatever and that should be to try to you know stay afloat and then you get this second job and everything that you make there pay your debt down as much as you possibly can and so that was interesting because the only way i know how to pay my debt down if i'm overspending is to stop spending you know as much as you can there's certain things you you have to do. You have to buy food for your family. You have to put food on the table. Um, if you have children that are small, you have to buy diapers. Diapers are super expensive today uh, <laughs> yeah. because I've got grandkids and I know it. You know, the milk for the babies are through the roof. Um, you know, they were... Six bucks a gallon for oh, organic. Oh, seven bucks. Seven bucks. Yeah, no, yeah. Wow. Five something for half a pint of organic milk. I mean, I, I mean. Oh I, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You're right. They're not a gallon. No. So. <laughs> so you, it's more expensive than gas. Yeah. So you know, raising childrens is expensive. You've got uh, schools that you know, if they go to private schools, uh, or you know, I mean. Yeah. Everything After is gone. After school. Oh. All the programs. There was an article I was reading that they said that cereal had gone up like twenty one percent or something like that. Cereal. Or 18%. So, you know, inflation creeps in and the value of your dollar is purchasing less because inflation is eating up the value of your dollar. And so, you know, I mean... Not only that, uh, I remember during the pandemic, it was going around social media everywhere because companies were changing their packaging. So the cereal that you bought for let's just say five dollars that was let's say uh 12 ounces or something I, i'm not sure the let's say it was you know 12 ounces now you're getting the same cereal for eight ounces or eight, yeah eight ten ounces, ounces or eight ounces for the same price for the same price right so you or know even like, a higher price you well, know so yeah, that's I, the effect of inflation you know Unfortunately, the consumer gets hit somewhere down the line yeah. because the companies are going to pass that cost to the consumers in order to stay afloat. Companies are also hurting because, for example, if they have short-term loans that have to be refinanced, now you're looking at interest rate. Everything is compounded. Money. Everything's Everything, connected. Everything's too. coming in and... Uh, how do you think this the credit the trillion dollar credit card debt in America? How do you think that affects home buying? I think everybody's gonna get hurt. I really do. I think that um, there are a number of people that I follow, and they're saying that we don't know it yet, or it hasn't been declared yet, but we are actually in a recession already. Now I know that's very controversial, and. We're no experts, okay? I'll tell you right now. We are no experts, so do your own research. But there are some people that we follow mm -hmm. that, or that I follow that are saying, look, we're already in a recession. It just hasn't been declared. And, I mean, all you have to do, and, um, you know, we, we also have this inverted yield curve on the short-term short treasuries. And traditionally, when that goes back to normal, the recession hits. And this is, I'm no expert, you guys look it up, but this is data. Like, for example, um, I believe that um, a three-month treasury right now is at around 5.45%. And a two-year is at around 4.8 or 4.9. These are bonds, correct? Yeah. So and these are, uh, you can could, you could buy these treasury bonds. Yeah. And the 10-year is at 4.19. So this is an inverted yield curve because usually it's backwards, okay? And usually you're going to be able to get the 10-year at a higher rate of return than the three-month treasury. And that's not the case right now. 
Hmm. So what the people that know are saying, the minute that this thing turns around, that's when recession is going to take a bite out of our economy. And I think that, the, you know, go back to basics. If you can, all of you that are out there, including us, yeah. right? We should try to have, hopefully, let's say three months of expenses saved up. If you can have six months of expenses of your, you know, yeah. uh, monthly expenses saved up, you're in better shape. Yeah. Some people have eight, nine, ten months. Wow, that's fantastic. In today's economy, in today, yeah. But you should have, but but how it, do you do that, that the, when you're living paycheck to paycheck? What was the percentage you just gave? Fifty percent of people. It's over sixty percent. Sixty paycheck to paycheck. Sixty percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, of U.S. consumers. That's incredible. Um, and by the way, that includes people that are making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. That also includes so, retirees. Retire. Okay. We're all, there's a lot of people that we're, we're going to suffer. Yeah. A lot of us are going to suffer. Um, I yeah. don't know. Well, look at the stock market. I mean, we were talking about it the other day. That's the, right. The Dow Jones, which is an index, right? Industrial average is, uh, it dropped 2,000 points within a uh, pretty short period of time. I mean, did you say 2,000 points? Yeah. I mean, we were, if you go back to uh, I know September, it was like 500 points yesterday, right? If you go to September 14th. Okay. Which is a couple weeks ago. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, it was at 34,907, uh, which is almost 35,000. This today, as I'm looking at this, is at 33,000. So it's almost 2,000 points right there. Yeah. Uh, within a couple weeks. Wow. Uh, if you look at um, the S and P five hundred, it went from on September fourteenth, same forty five, four thousand five hundred and five, and today it's at four thousand two hundred and sixty. Two sixty. Four thousand two hundred and sixty. So, you're three hundred. Three hundred points, right? Yeah. So. These are big drops, um, and these are indexes, right? And these are the NASDAQ. So, you know, like you said, we're positive people. We <laughs> want to, <laughs> we want to, um, I think the advice you gave is excellent. I think we all need to hear it. I need to hear it. It's tighten the belt. I think. Because um, whatever is coming you know you want to be prepared for it you want to have savings you want to have you know some money saved up because if people start walking away from their credit card debt because they can no longer pay it then there goes your credit oh yeah um oh it's going it's you know, going to affect you all over the place. You know? Everything is contingent on, on your job and your income. And if you can't pay that credit card debt and you can no longer make that mortgage payment or that rent, you know, consolidate. I mean, we're talking to friends that are saying, hey, I'm looking at maybe moving in with family right. to save. That's excellent. You moving know, with your family. I'm looking, you know. There's see, a ton of people moving back with their parents. There, there will always be opportunity, um, even in the downs, right? People make money in the ups and in the downs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, where, but I think it's good advice what you're saying. It's just prepare yourself. Yeah, like, for example, we love, my wife and I, we love to go out to eat at restaurants. Yeah. We have curtailed that tremendously. We're cooking more at home, mm. okay? And that is going to save us quite a bit of money because, I mean, if you go to a restaurant today and you order a fish plate, like a salmon plate, that thing is going to cost you 36 bucks, you know, where you can go to the store and buy a good salmon maybe for seven bucks, six something. Yeah. And... 
but you're not going to spend $36 on that plate. And like I said, God forbid you order a drink or you get dessert. That's what they get you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. it sounds funny, but, no, you're right. you know, a piece of cake. Have your dessert at home. <laughs> you know, so no dessert. It's it's better for you anyway. Less sugar, right? Uh, and so, you <laughs> another thing, just don't go hungry. Another which, thing that I want... <laughs> That I wanted to throw in was, you know, I, I read it and they, they recommend your utilization ratio should be less than 30%. That's what they recommend okay. for credit cards. So if you have $10,000 of credit limit, you should use less than 3000 on a constant basis to help keep your FICO score the best. Oh, okay. It's not realistic. I just don't think it's realistic. I think it's a good goal to have, but... People that need to make payments for certain things, they need to pay their phone bill, they need to pay their internet bill, whatever, you know, their health insurance, you're not looking at a ratio. Right. <laughs> it's just not realistic, but they're saying that the ratio is still under 30% for all U.S. consumers, so we still have a lot of access, but what Michael Bordanero, is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's Am good. Am I saying it correctly? Yeah, Michael you, you are. Uh -huh. What he's saying is that that's not realistic because people are consolidating the debt, clearing it off their credit card, putting it in personal loans or lines, and it's unrealistic. It's not real, the figures. Right, right. He also says that the GDP figures are not real. Oh, he's... I'm not getting <laughs> into this, that, but... But, but he's good. And, uh, yeah, he destroyed the GDP... <laughs> It says a lot of these figures are not real. They're not. They're inflated. They're inflated. They're, they're bringing in stuff that doesn't apply. They're not the core structure of the thing. So um, they change definitions. They change the definition definition. of a recession was changed. That's right. It used to be two consecutive quarters of of negative GDP. That is correct. That's and, exactly what it. And it was cha it was changed on the uh, <laughs> the government website. I know, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> Um, he said it, and I checked up on him, and I think, I, he, and he's right. We have had already two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Okay, so technically, we, sh you know, that's why him and some other people are saying, "Look, I think we're already in a recession." Okay, I think we're already in a recession. So you know, yeah. It's uh yeah it's uh well if they're changing the definition they're moving the goalposts or they're further out right and that's why people are saying you know this is not meant to be a negative uh, podcast you know we are positive people <laughs> but we're seeing things that are signs yes and so the best thing you can do is prepare yourself and try and put yourself in the best situation and when um when things do drop eventually whenever that is. It will lead to opportunity for some people too. You uh, know, I, I remember, uh, you know, here in, in the Inland Empire, I remember there were houses, you know, for 50, this is in 2000, and I think it was like 10, 11, or in those years. There were houses, single family homes for $50,000, oh, $60,000. Wow. So unfortunately, someone lost that home. Right, right. Uh, but the cycle of life is that, right, it, you rebuild. You rebuild, yeah. Well, I mean, God willing, you know, uh, many folks are not in that situation. But unfortunately, the statistics show it otherwise, you know, where we're just creating a lot more debt because we, because our salaries are not enough to sustain what we need to bring in. That's a big one. And wages. We're get, yeah, wages. That's and a big one. So, and so, um, and even if you got, see, this is another thing. I was following um, a couple of people, but, uh, you know, they said, look, even if you got a $10,000 raise in your salary, okay? Yeah. With the cost of inflation going up, it's still not enough to cover and offset what you need to bring in in terms of to survive every day, you know, put food on the table, uh, pay for your mortgage. Uh, God forbid, you know, you need a tune-up in your vehicle. You know, all this, everything has gone 
really honestly, th you know, through the roof. Yeah. So you have a lot more expenses, but the salaries, you know, even if you got a raise, it's not enough to compensate for the difference in, you know, what the, the bite that inflation is taking out of you. And so you got to be careful. A lot of people are saying, I think Michael says it too, don't, don't go out there and buy a car if you don't need it. Hold on to that clunker for, you know, another year longer. <laughs> um, you know, if you don't, you know, you have a small TV, but you want to upgrade to a big one, don't do it right now. Just hold on a minute just to see what happens a little bit down the line. And, you know, now... If you got extra cars lying around... Sell them. Turn one in. <laughs> Turn one in. Sell one in. Yeah. You know, decrease your debt any which way you possibly can. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now we're going into the quarter, you know, there's Christmas, New Year and stuff where people are going to be <laughs> even spending more money and putting maybe a lot of it on credit card. That's another point. So you need... So if you go into... The spending... The holiday season. It, you're going into the holiday season, but if you are, you know, aware that something big is looming, you know, maybe for the first quarter of next year or the second quarter of next year, you know, 2024, we could get hit with something big. You know, you tell your family, hey... Um, it'll be a humble gift this it'll year. It'll be a humble gift this year. <laughs> I, you know, and I know there's no shame in saying you can't afford it, you know, family will understand, you know, and uh, uh, be careful, uh, you know, buying too much stuff if you can't afford it, you know, it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's we, simple, the answer is simple, but it's complicated, it's complicated, it's hard <laughs> to do, because, yeah. you know, how do you tell your kids, hey, I can't buy you, and, you know, kids nowadays, you know, they, you take them to the store, and any toy costs an arm and a leg. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a toy yesterday. It was 30 bucks for a tiny little thing like this. Yeah, 30 bucks. And, and if it has a little motor or if it's got a car that moves or whatever, it's 120 or oh, 150 bucks. And if you want to get into the Legos and all that, I've heard Bet David say these some of these Legos are hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of dollars. You're talking about big <laughs> yeah, there was. A, I went to the store to, to look at a toy. It's a Batman that opens up. And inside the Batman, you can put... The Batman is about three and a half feet tall or three three feet tall. And it opens up and... I mean, I, I would even enjoy playing with that. Okay? I never had that growing up. And uh, I think that Batman was like 180 bucks. Something like that. I, I don't remember exactly, yeah. but it was expensive. And the more things you buy for the inside, because it opens up and it has a hollow cavity and you can... It's got things that you can hook up and this yeah. and that. The more stuff you buy, the more expensive it gets. <laughs> so, you know, be careful. Tighten your belt. That's yeah. what we could say, you know. I I'm agree. doing it. I'm, I'm not going out to eat. Pay uh, down as much as possible on, on those, right, on those credit cards. Yeah. They'll you know, come and bite you. I'm doing that as much as possible. Um, yeah. But the other side of things is that you have the, the essentials filling up the tank, uh, like we talked about food, um, whatever, what other, whatever other essentials that you have that, like for your children, right, diapers and things like that, soap, <laughs> toothpaste, toothbrush, the essentials are what's gone up significantly in price. Right. A pair of shoes oh. will cost you a easily a hundred bucks now oh are you kidding me for sure so that's the thing that's the thing is that you know you have we have to sacrifice. i wait for them to go on sale <laughs> yeah yeah that's what we got if do. i need them <laughs> and make them last that's make them last <laughs> cool all right thank you oh no thank this you good